Hello, everyone. It's Friday Takeaway again. And today our guest is uh, Zoltan Patai, ex McKinsey general manager of Nat Pincer, now Food Panda, a long time food delivery market leader in Hungary, uh, the player which was acquired by Delivery Hero. Today, Food Panda Hungary is 400 plus employees around 4,000 couriers all over the country delivering millions of orders to the Hungarians in more than 35 cities. Am I right? Yes, that's correct. And uh, welcome, everyone. For a while, NetPincer was the only player on the market uh, after Vault and Bold uh, arrived uh, during the pandemic. And recently, Rocket also uh, entered the Hungarian market. How does it affect uh, Food Panda, what are the pros and cons of the current competition situation in Hungary? Yeah, all right. Uh, probably I would start with the history of the company because I think many of the listeners or the viewers are not aware of uh, the Hungarian market. So uh, NetPincer, which was the uh, old brand of Food Panda, was actually founded in 1999. So it was one of the first food delivery companies all around the world. Uh, if you compare that to the current market leaders in food delivery, most of them were founded like uh, beyond or after 2010. So it was really like uh, uh, one of the first innovators uh, in the world. Uh, wow. As you said, uh, for a very long time, uh, NetPincer was basically a single player in the market. Uh, but also, uh, I would say from the years of 2000, there were several smaller or bigger players in the Hungarian market, uh, but they were going or coming and going by. So there was quite a big, big, quite a big fluctuation on the market. And uh, the recent competitors that are here uh, actually entered in the past uh, three, three and a half years. So Walt launched in Hungary in 2018, uh, Bolt uh, Food uh, in 2019, and then the latest one, uh, Rocket Delivery or Rakata, uh, just at the end of the last year. So that's uh, basically an overview of the Hungarian market. And, uh, and one more important piece that we will discuss today is that we are referring uh, to our company both as NetPincer and Food Panda. The reason for that is... Uh, Last year, uh, in October, uh, we rebranded the 22-year-old brand, NetPincer, to Food Panda, and now we are called Food Panda in Hungary. So that's a awesome. bit of uh, history and an overview to the, to the listeners. Uh, about the market, what you have to know about Hungary is that because of the uh, early innovation of NetPincer, I would say it's a bit more advanced than some other European markets in terms of food delivery. Uh, so for instance, the penetration um, is slightly higher, the number of orders per restaurant is slightly higher. Um, and, uh, and by now we can say that uh, almost all of the restaurants uh, are already on Food Panda. Wow, uh, really? Uh, that want to do food delivery or 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 that are uh, that are more well known in in the in the country, um, and uh, that of course accelerated quite a lot uh, during the pandemic. Uh, right. Already before that, it was a, a big acceleration, but during the pandemic, uh, it just uh, speeded up, speeded up even further. Uh, is, yeah. uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but is Hungary like more developed, uh, one of the most developed in Central Eastern Europe? Or is it like for all the European markets and we can compare it with uh, UK and France, right? Uh, where the industries are huge. Uh, could you yeah. please give some reference to the market development? Maybe some specifics like what is uh, the penetration? How many orders are done monthly by all the players? Maybe by, Nap by NapPincer, uh, you know, yeah. some insights to understand how big it is if possible. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, as you know, Delivery Hero is a, a stock listed company. So we cannot actually uh, share like a country right. level information. We are just reporting uh, on, on European level. And we are not present, for instance, in, uh, in UK or, or France. So we have less information about those markets. But yeah, what I can tell you that within Central and Eastern Europe, we are definitely uh, the most advanced food delivery market. 
but also if you compare to uh, some Western or uh, Northern European markets where we are present, we are also uh, more developed compared to those markets. Awesome. Yeah. Very interesting. Never thought uh, that Hungary will be one of the uh, leaders in terms of the restaurant tech and food tech last mile delivery, yeah. right? Yeah, but I think it's also very important to put it into perspective. So even if you believe that, uh, so even if you say that, okay, we are a bit more advanced than other countries, uh, I, it's also important to highlight that the opportunity ahead of us only in the food delivery, so not talking about delivery of other uh, goods, is still like huge in front of us. So uh, a, a good benchmark that we uh, like to say as an ambition is to deliver uh, basically one order per population per month. So in Hungary's case, that would be 10 million orders per month. Uh, right. And what we see is that there are already countries all over the world that achieve this milestone. Uh, for instance, one such country is China, which is, of course, uh, the one of the most developed countries in terms of food delivery. So we like to be ambitious and we believe that there is still uh, a lot of room for growth still in the food delivery segment too. That's awesome. Uh, actually, uh, speaking about Asia uh, and the developed markets there, is uh, would it be the right statement to say that uh, Asia is several years ahead of us? Uh, and uh, as a brand, a uh, food panda brand, right, which is very developed in Asia uh, and uh, which has a lot of experience and knowledge about the markets and uh, what to do on the markets as a part of Delivery Hero, do you use uh, these knowledge uh, to improve the operations, the processes, grow and whatnot? Yeah. So first of all, uh, I think we cannot generalize that uh, that Asia is more ahead of Europe. So it really depends uh, based on the country. Yes, there are some countries which are more developed, uh, such as China uh, or Vietnam, for instance, or Korea. Uh, but there are more underdeveloped markets uh, in Asia. Uh, as well, like Cambodia, Laos, uh, right, Pakistan. Right, right, right. Uh, so it really depends on the market. But coming back to your question, yes, definitely one big uh, strength of Delivery Hero is that we have basically uh, now more than 75 markets, thanks to the, since the global acquisition, it actually increased uh, by additional 25. So we have right. more than 75 markets, and in more than 90% of those markets, uh, we are market leader, including in Hungary. And we have, uh, so we focus a lot on, on yes, sharing knowledge, sharing experiences and best practices so that we can learn from each other. And, and that's super relevant and super important for, for us as well in Hungary. Uh, we, we often, yes, uh, learn from other countries and then we uh, introduce uh, new features accordingly. But uh, we are very proud because there are also some uh, business models or features that were first tested or that were first invented in Hungary. And then we basically try to move it to, to other countries afterwards. Really? Could you maybe share some examples? What were the innovations that you did uh, in that Pinsir and Food Panda uh, that is actually being tested or uh, yeah. is already spread, maybe something already present and something that you can share? Yeah, I mean, uh, what I can share with you is, uh, I would say, a nice, uh, a nice little feature on our website and an application, which is related to NGOs and donations. So uh, what we started, like, I think, more than five years ago, uh, wow. is that we contracted with different type of NGOs and uh, we created for them, basically, kind of a restaurant. Uh, and then within the restaurant, you could choose uh, different items uh, for donation. Like for instance, if it, it is a, uh, an NGO for um, uh, planting trees and supporting the environment, you could choose whether you want to plant one or three or five trees, whether you want to plant that kind of tree or that kind nice. of tree. And you could basically go through the entire flow uh, uh, via the platform. And this is something that is, uh, very, very much uh, appreciated by our customers and uh, frequently used. And then uh, we basically brought this best practice to other countries. And coming back uh, to the topic of the market leadership uh, and the yeah. Hungarian market, you said that the potential is so big and uh, you can grow so much. Um, 
So basically, uh, would it be the correct statement right now that you don't really compete with each other with Vault and Bolt, and you're actually helping each other to educate the market and to grow it? Still, we, we, the market is still at that stage. The market from 1999, uh, Nat Pincer was educating people that you can order food online, and there is still enough place for everyone and enough room for growth? Yes. Uh... I think you can kind of state that, yes, yeah, so there is still quite a big growth in the market um, in front of all of us. And uh, I mean, when there is larger competition, uh, there is also an advantage of that, that uh, with the entire pie, the entire market can just grow faster because as you said, there are more companies uh, that are educating the, the market. So in that sense, uh, it's actually uh, positive for for a market and also for a customer uh, if there is a if there is a larger competition. Uh, having said that, uh, of course, with such a high growth market, there is always uh, the threat and the danger that it's easier to lose your market position because. Uh, if the market is not growing, then you have to basically steal from each other the customers, and that is always more difficult <clears throat> than, for instance, acquiring new customers or making customers order more. Um, so in that sense, you have to be very careful and have a very good strategy uh, how you are growing uh, in order to maintain your leadership position. And for us, uh, what is super important in that sense is to uh, always innovate, uh, that's one thing. Uh, and secondly, also to have uh, the best people in the company. So we want to basically attract the best talents and build an amazing culture because I believe that these are two uh, are both super important to, to maintain and strengthen the, uh, the market leader position. As a market player, uh, you're not only on the food delivery uh, competition side, but you also uh, have grocery delivery. Actually, uh, to describe uh, Food Panda, uh, I would I would describe it. I mean, Nat Pincer, uh, Food Panda. I would describe it that it's a massive restaurant aggregator with a big heritage of that. A last mile delivery company uh, that is doing food and grocery delivery also from the dark stores, right? From your own dark stores. So you're an aggregator, a last mile delivery company and a retailer at the same time because you own your supply chain, yeah. right? Uh, could we please dive a little bit deeper into that? Yeah, so uh, going a bit ahead of the questions, uh, actually that's one of the reasons that uh, we decided to rebrand NetPincer to Food Panda because as you said, uh, there was a big heritage uh, and association that we are a restaurant and food delivery company. Uh, and that really stick to people's head because it has been like a 22 year brand uh, right. when we replaced the brand. So um, so I think from now we can just call uh, the company Food Panda so that uh, we do not confuse the listeners and the viewers. Um, awesome. Yeah, so when it comes to how we would, how we would define the company and what, what we are doing, uh, what we say is that we are now a pure commerce company and our ambition is to deliver anything that customers want within 30 minutes, be it food, grocery, uh, pet food, uh, um, health supply, medicine, whatever is needed from customers. And uh, we like to actually uh, build around that uh, value proposition um, and, and our strengths. So when it comes to, for instance, the last mile delivery, uh, that was basically a natural next step because uh, beyond a certain point, there were no more uh, partners that were delivering themselves. And also beyond a certain point, uh, there was an increase in customer expectation uh, that required innovation. And that's why we, for instance, launched Last My Delivery, with which we could then basically open up the entire market because then we could deliver from anyone who wanted to join the platform, they didn't need to build up a career fleet first. And also- right. And you were also the first movers experience. of that, right? Of building the yes. last mile, yes. you were the first movers. Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, and then when it comes to uh, the dark store business model, so Panda markets, again, uh, it is a natural next step because 
uh, yes, we work together with lots of supermarket chains and, and smaller grocery shops. Uh, we just also wanted to make sure um, that uh, we provide uh, groceries and, and the main household items at a very quick speed uh, uh, and in even regions where we may not have uh, uh, an external partner yet. So that's why uh, it was crucial for us to, to launch Panda Markets and the, and the dark store business. So uh, as you can see, we are really now a Q-commerce player. Um, so when it comes to food, uh, there we have uh, by now around 6,000 restaurants on the platform, including all the biggest brands. When it comes to groceries, there we have very large partners on the platform, like supermarket chains like Tesco or Penny Market or Coop, which is a, a Hungarian chain. Uh, but we also have uh, by now uh, 14 Panda Market dark stores all around the country, uh, covering Budapest and eight other cities in Hungary. And on top of that, we have lots of uh, so-called non-food and non-grocery partners. We have uh, cosmetics brands, we have uh, pharmacy chains, uh, we have pet store, uh, different kinds of health supply stores. Uh, so by now we are really delivering everything that, that customers want within 30, day, 30 minutes, um, as, I, as I just mentioned. And, and yes, coming back to staying uh, a market leader, as I said, it's super important to, to innovate and, uh, and continuously renew yourself. So for instance, uh, we were also the first ones uh, to launch uh, this dark store business model in Hungary. Uh, in December I mean, 2020. Yeah, uh, in December 2020, you already launched the first dark store. Well, yes, exactly. Having having the delivery hero being the uh, largest probably uh, player outside of China, having thousands of these uh, dark stores, yeah. you you had a head start right with that. You had all the expertise. You already knew that the model was uh, growing, and uh, the initial idea, as far as I understood, was to actually build the retail where you cannot provide the proposition first. Was that the strategy? I think it's, uh, it, is, it, it really depends on the country and it, it really depends uh, on the local needs. So in our case in, in Hungary, uh, it was on the one hand side, uh, provide grocery delivery services uh, in, in, in all the area uh, where we believe there is a demand for it, even if we don't have an external partner yet. Second, it was also to provide a service uh, which may have a different target customer base than the large grocery chains, even if they join the, right. uh, the platform. So for instance, having super quick delivery uh, uh, from uh, your favorite uh, brands, even some cool hipster brands, uh, and certainly also we are building this uh, because we want to use that technology to also support uh, our external supermarket partners. So um, as you said, in, in the dark store business, uh, we control the entire end-to-end -end, uh, customer journey. And to support that, we are building our own technology uh, from buying from suppliers to uh, managing uh, the stocks in the warehouse uh, for until picking. And this technology can be used then later on by external partners too. So for instance, our picking application can already be used uh, by also uh, our external partners. So you basically build all these infrastructure for Hungary to be ready for this Q-commerce right? Like you have the internet, uh, everybody has the smartphones, the only need there is right now is this infrastructure of people delivering stuff, having the place to aggregate it on, uh, having the warehouses, micro fulfillments, and having the software for the people like smaller uh, shops and bodegas, right? Uh, to which you also uh, reach out and provide them with the software. Yeah, so basically, uh... The ambition is that any type of shop could join uh, uh, the service and, and could start uh, basically delivering to their customers within 30 minutes. 
uh, without any fixed costs and without any investments and, and within one, two days. So basically, uh, if they want to join, then basically they just have to sign up to our platform uh, and then basically uh, they can start delivering right away within 30 minutes. And the next, uh, the next natural expansion of this is, is offering all of these services also to shops and different kinds of stores uh, that are not on the Food Panda platform. Uh, so only basically the, the last mile logistics service with all the technology included. Uh, and that is the so-called logistics as a service value proposition um, that we are also launching in the Hungarian market and in many other markets. Uh, so this will be again an innovation uh, that we believe can create uh, like a huge market in itself. So we discussed before uh, that basically there is the, the core food delivery market that still has a huge growth potential in front of us. But if you look at uh, the grocery delivery or this uh, logistics as a service markets, I mean, they are also just super large markets in themselves. And we believe that they can be, uh, they can even become larger markets than the food delivery market uh, at some point in the future. So in that sense, if you are thinking wow. about uh, our company, uh, both in Hungary and globally, we are still in a, uh, in a beginner stage uh, in terms of growth and we, can, we have the potential to, to be much larger. Just to put it, as a, put it into uh, perspectives in Hungary, for instance, um, we are already probably the largest e-commerce company in terms of transaction number. Right. Um, but of course, in terms of uh, gross merchandise value revenues, we are not yet simply because our basket sizes are smaller. So we have more transactions, but lower basket sizes than, for instance, if you compare to like uh, like the Amazons of this world, where basically they have electronic goods and, and everything at, at very large basket sizes. Of course, of course. But, but because of this last mile uh, logistics network that we're having and the technology behind and all the millions of customers, uh, we have basically the ambition to become the largest player, not only in terms of transaction number, but also in terms of revenue and gross merchandise value. Uh, and, and we believe, at least in Hungary, I know the numbers, I believe that uh, is doable and it's not that far away. So, so that's a, a next ambition for us. Wow, this is huge. I mean, it's really the uh, evolution of retail and uh, consumption. I mean, previously it was uh, one behavioral pattern. Uh, now with all the infrastructure that you have, uh, you will basically be the provider uh, of uh, the convenience, right? Yeah. You order anything, and this way you also grow uh, your LTV for the clients mm -hmm. that they can order anything. You provide mm -hmm. more value, you grow your basket size as well, because it is a big problem for food delivery companies that you can only grow as much, right? Like at the dessert and whatnot. And uh, I mean, people eat three times a day, but still, yeah. uh, the, there are a lot of low hanging fruits that all these aggregators uh, can bring to their platform. And we see different examples of doing that, like Uber and GoPuff partnership, right? It's not that Uber is building yet the infrastructure, right? As of the public information, but they need to increase this basket size to utilize the couriers and uh, uh, utilize all the um, marketing uh, that is put in the brands and uh, all the technology that is needed to support all that. Uh, yes, just just yesterday uh, we were talking with the uh, CEO of uh, Bike, uh, and basically um, this uh, we, we we discussed that uh, this value proposition is just the evolution of what was done before in terms of ordering online the groceries online that was mm -hmm. proposed. Uh, previously, but now it's just the different stage of it, uh, where yeah. the customers have more power uh, and ho have more opportunities, how they can consume the stuff, what they consume, 
and uh, uh, these, this is just a new proposition to which I believe the retail needs to adjust. What do you yeah. think uh, of the current offline sector? Uh, is it ready? I mean, is it ready for the disruption? We still see a lot of players uh, kind of refusing these new um, vectors that are dictated to us. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. it's not just the pandemic, it's there are a lot of trends and factors, but there are a lot of people resenting that. What do you think? Uh, how many years uh, do we need to educate the market? And what should these offline people who don't believe in this expect? Yeah, so I think uh, if you're talking about grocery or if you're talking about other non-food items, uh, yes, we are much more uh we are not so we are much more in a in the beginning stage compared to food but food delivery where the penetration is already higher right uh, both in terms of partners being online as well as customers using that uh but also in food delivery you could see the same trend that there were there were basically restaurants who like, didn't want to deliver yet uh, they didn't believe uh in this market or they believe that it is not doable uh, in a customer uh, friendly way, which provides great customer experience, or it's not right. going to be done in a profitable way. And still today, there are some, but the, the, the size of that segment is much smaller. And those are rather the, the, those type of restaurants uh, where it's super, super natural that they're not delivering like fine dining restaurants, right. or cantons, et cetera. But for the rest of the market, most of the restaurants are already delivering and uh, I expect a, a bit of a similar trend uh, for groceries as well as for non-food items uh, that there are of course early adopters who are already doing this business uh, and then of course there will be companies who decide that it is not their strategy yet uh, but I would yeah I would caution them because uh, the customer expectation is really there uh, that they want to actually get whatever they buy online delivered as soon as possible. And we are not talking about now days, but actually we are talking about Man. minutes, so not even hours. Yes. Yeah. So I think the, the strategic question for most of the retailers should be not whether we are doing it or not, but how and how can be, as you said, by building yourself, by uh, having partnerships, uh, with other companies or joining uh, such online platforms or integrating uh, logistics service into your own digital channels. So there are various ways to do it. And I think the question should be how, as I said, and not whether you are doing it or now. And maybe one more thing that I would highlight is that I think an interesting trend that we will see in retail in the, in the coming years is not only the growth of sales via online channels, but also uh, the digitalization of in-store purchases. So that's also something uh, that retailers should be uh, ready to embrace. Uh, and, and that will be the, 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 custom, the, the omni-channel customer experience that is more and more required. So imagine that um, you put together a basket on your application and then you go to the store and you can finish your purchase there. Uh, or you go to the store and based on your uh, previous uh, either online and offline uh, uh, purchase data, they can give you personalized offers, et cetera. And all of this requires digitalization of uh, the stores as well. So I think we are um, ahead of a super interesting and exciting times in retail. And, uh, and yeah, this will be the, the next frontier uh, for the digital battle. And that's why uh, there are so many companies trying to, trying to capture this very attractive and exciting space. For sure. And guys, listen up. You don't always get the, almost never uh, get the McKinsey advice for free, right? <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks for yeah, the great was, answer. Yeah. Thanks for the great yeah. answer. Uh, yeah. Definitely. I, I think uh, for me, it's a no brainer uh, that this is the future. I think uh, that uh, it's, it's actually the moment uh, where it is so visible that the online and offline uh, get so merged with each other. 
and these client experience, uh, which um, with Brit and Lat, we discuss is social commerce, where you see something online and you can immediately buy it or you continue your experience offline, as you mentioned, right? Uh, but this also creates such a massive opportunity for the retailers, for the software companies, for the customers, for uh, everyone on this market, because this is something completely new. Uh, this is some. This is a place where you can be super relevant to your client with the data you're getting from it, rather than just spamming on email, but actually being relevant here and now uh, for this person in the exact time, location, uh, specifically on the customer profile. I think yeah. that, it, I, I believe it's just a gold mine of the uh, retail potential uh, where people can get more margins, people can increase the sales, increase the baskets, and customers can eventually benefit from it. But of course, there will be uh, losers uh, of this evolution. I mean, we're not riding a horse right now as well. Uh, so uh, it's, it's for, from my side, it's no brainer that uh, the retailers should be super alert on the trends. Uh, thank you for the great answer about these pillars uh, of, of food panda uh, kind of like vectors of development, uh, the aggregator, the restaurant delivery, last mile as a service, uh, grocery delivery, uh, own dark stores. Where do you see uh, the most potential? I mean, you already mentioned that you kind of hit the ceiling with the aggregator, you kind of hit the ceiling with food delivery. You mentioned that last mile of the service and grocery delivery dark, and dark stores can be actually bigger and are most likely going to be bigger than food delivery. Um, in which of those uh, are you planning to concentrate on the most? Should we see more dark stores uh, or more couriers on the streets? Uh, where are you planning uh, to have uh, the most growth in the coming years? I think, to be honest, that you haven't hit the ceiling in, in any of these areas. Probably the only uh, segment which is a bit less attractive is the aggregator one. Right. Uh, and right. aggregator being that... Uh, that we are not delivering anything. We are just connecting the customer and the restaurant. And the reason for that, because there are more and more uh, partners, restaurants who have done uh, delivery before themselves, who decide that they would like to actually switch to food panda delivery, just because uh, on the one hand side, it provides a better customer experience and thus better reorder rates and thus uh, better revenue or higher revenue in the long term but also because uh, it can be more profitable to them. Because if you think right. about it, uh, the utilization with this business model is just much better uh, than if you are doing it for your own. So if you put that aside, I think in all of the other segments, there is still a huge potential. And uh, as I said, we would like to focus on, on all of these. Um, I mean, of course, we are at a different maturity level. So in terms of uh, restaurant, food delivery, uh, um, which is still the largest segment. Uh, probably there cannot be as high growth as in the completely new segments, but we still believe that there is a lot of improvement potential there, be it either improving the product, which facilitates customers to find uh, restaurants easier, um, uh, uh, also to have and more deal opportunities there uh, so that they order more frequently. So I think there are lots of opportunities there still. And, and that's how you can get to that one order per uh, month per population. Right, per right. We, we need to remember the goal. Uh, right, right. Yes. And then, of course, when it comes to uh, grocery delivery, including own dark stores and logistics service, these are, uh, these are in dust or these are segments that are uh, that have a much higher growth potential just because they are more in the beginning stage. Uh, we would like to focus on, on, on both of them strongly. So on the, on the grocery delivery, uh, we would like to actually uh, partner with the largest grocery chains in Hungary. So uh, besides the ones that we currently have, 
Uh, of course, we would like to have the other big ones as well on the platform. When it comes to our own dark store chain, fund the markets, uh, we would like to continue our expansion. Um, so um, it's not a secret that we are planning to open additional on the market dark stores in Hungary in this year, including in new cities, because uh, just, a one, just a short side note, what we see is that uh, the countryside really deserves the same customer experience and services as the capital of Budapest. And, definitely, and, and definitely. a lot of companies actually forget about that and uh, they only focus on Budapest. And, and that's something that Food Panda customers really appreciate that we are always bringing our innovation very quickly to the countryside. Uh, so that's just a side note that I wanted to add. And uh, yeah, of course, for logistics as a service, we are just starting that. So there basically, uh, there is a huge potential, but what I can already tell you, there is a, a big interest uh, in the market. And to be honest, uh, I think there will be even bigger one once customers start to experience how it is when you, I don't know, buy some shoes and you can get it delivered in 30 minutes and not two days. So that will be, I, I think, such a game changer. Yeah. Man, I cannot wait for these types <laughs> to come. That will solve so much of my headache, right? Yeah. Uh, because these two day delivery, uh, even like next day delivery is planned delivery. You know, it's not on demand. It's something that you need to adjust, right? And in many cases, it's it's not convenient. You know, it's just yeah. the environment that we have to live in. I mean, obviously, previously there was no delivery at all. Uh, and uh, uh, I mean, uh, who are we uh, to uh, complain about slow delivery? But this is kind of essential, you know, the speed of life is definitely growing. The horizon of planning uh, is getting shorter. You know, we are managing to do um, more things uh, in the uh, time period, you know, and uh, the accessibility of things is becoming uh, more and more wider. Uh, so I absolutely uh, mm -hmm. cannot wait for everything to be yeah. <laughs> delivered under uh, 30 minutes. About this Q-commerce thing, um, there are actually no other players, if I do not mistake, in Hungary uh, doing the uh, dark store uh, grocery delivery, ultra-fast grocery delivery, right? None of the global players entered only food panda or please correct me if i'm wrong uh and the question is uh, what do you think uh about the new players uh entering the market for the rapid uh grocery yeah. delivery and if you could share maybe some context for the central eastern uh europe in general because it feels like it's a little bit underserved as well compared to the more central europe uh markets yeah so in terms of Q-commerce, indeed, there is no pure player, Q-commerce player in, in Hungary at the moment. One of our competitors has just started recently, like two months ago, also building their first dark stores in the market. Uh, but again, they're at a very prelimin preliminary stage. Uh, and yeah, why is that? And whether I expect anyone to come? I think that's a very good question, of course. Uh, uh, I cannot know what is the intent right. of the... Uh, of the competition and the, all these pure e-commerce players all around the world. But one thought that I would I would share here is that uh, the importance of first mover advantage. So uh, as we as we saw that in food delivery, uh, food uh, first mover advantage is super important because if you try out a service for the first time and you are satisfied with it, uh, then it's super difficult to actually convince customers to, to switch to another service. And uh, I think uh, because we built out uh, such, a, such an advantage in food delivery before, that was one of the reasons why competitors uh, were reluctant to enter Hungary for a very long time. And I think it can be very similar in case of Q-commerce uh, if you continue our expansion like that. Um, the second thought that I would have is just simply there is such a such a big battleground in in larger markets at the moment in uh, Western Europe or in North America uh, is that uh, it, I think it's a natural strategy for these uh, larger pu uh, 
pure Q-commerce player is to focus on those markets first. And uh, of course, what we can do in Hungary uh, is to use this opportunity to, to build out an advantage as high, as big advantage as possible. Uh, so that by the time they start looking around where else to go, they don't want to come here <laughs> anymore. Right, right. But uh, also uh, the new players getting on the market can help to drive the market, right? To teach the customers a uh, new experience, to teach the customer new habits and provide more uh, opportunities as well yeah. as uh, help you uh, be um, more efficient, be faster, uh, mm -hmm. be better in the yeah. experience that you're giving to the customer. Uh, yeah. There are a lot of, the bigger players uh, have a bigger fish to fry. I agree with you, but there are a lot of smaller ones, uh, local ones, for example, like Lisek in Poland, uh, Grovi in Germany that is uh, expanding in Czech Republic and Romania, right? And there are quite a few others, right? Uh, do you uh, think that the Central Eastern kind of side of Europe is going to see more uh, of these services rising and more of the players getting uh, into yeah. these markets? Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, uh, Central and Eastern Europeans are anyway very entrepreneurial, I can say that. So uh, I think lots of entrepreneurs see that uh, yes, these larger players are focusing on these bit bigger, better grounds. And in the, in the meantime, they try to actually then enter these markets and capture uh, a bigger or smaller uh, market share. Uh, so I would expect that there will be such companies, uh, but that was the case also in food delivery or last mile logistics. Uh, and yeah, it really depends basically uh, whether, uh, what is the business of, the, of these companies, uh, what, is, what kind of talents they can get, uh, what kind of equity, not equity, sorry, but what kind of uh, financing they can have uh, to enter these markets. So. Uh, let's see if uh, any of them will succeed. But of course, you can see uh, great examples for that. So, uh, I mean, Netpintzer in Hungary or Damajidlo in, in Czech Republic were also great examples where local players could grow big before. Oh, yeah, those Indonesia are big success stories. Like also in Hungary, uh, fun fact, uh, Food Panda entered the market first uh, by itself. Uh, but couldn't actually beat uh, NetPinsair. So that's how uh, they acquired then afterwards NetPinsair. So that was the easier way to actually uh, beat the local competition. Right. Actually, uh, I believe that uh, the smaller players uh, and younger companies, uh, the local ones, can be very valuable uh, for the bigger players who have the money and who have the resources to fund the expansion. Because... Um, as the bike founders say, it's easy to enter the market. It's hard to stay on it and grow. It is a very competitive uh, market in terms of the funding. You need a lot of money to keep on growing, to keep on building the infrastructure until you get the scale, right? And until you get the uh, size where you yeah. can bring in the efficiency into the processes. Uh, getting the right uh, products, getting the right software, uh, being efficient with your staff and uh, orders to be delivered, uh, right? All that needs uh, a lot of back office work. And uh, these companies actually have a huge opportunity to have these markets uh, and then to merge with somebody or to ally with someone, right? With some local retailers, who also need these new channels, right? There are a lot of opportunities for the homegrown brands to be acquired or to partner with the local players yeah. like Gorillas did with Tesco yeah. or Kaju did with the Carefour, right? It's yeah. a great example of the local player where the company started this pure play and is a significant player in France, right? And is not yeah. really planning to expand anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, no, uh, I, so look, I, I, I don't think that there won't be any local competitor entering this market because of course there is a very exciting market and uh, interesting opportunity. Still, I would say that, uh, and I would caution entrepreneurs not to enter just with the objective to being acquired by a bigger player. 
right. um, because you never know what happens. So I think uh, your objective would be or should be to build a sustainable business in itself. Uh, and then, uh, of course, it depends later on if there are uh, what kind of exit opportunities are there in the market. Again, listen up, free McKinsey advice. The opportunity is huge. Uh, the uh, trends are there. Uh, money is there. Uh, we see tremendous this funds uh, flowing into this Q commerce of delivering under 30 minutes, right? And all these um, expansion happening throughout the world. What do you think are the barriers uh, that yeah. can happen on the way that can slow down the growth or, uh, you know, uh, make these companies to stop, stay, step back and uh, change something in terms of keeping yeah. this growth? Yeah, I get the question. So if, if I think about the biggest risks uh, in that sense, one is, I think, uh, the lack of funding, which actually can happen in case the interest rates are uh, increasing further and there is less uh, funding in the private markets. Right. Um, so that, I think, is, is one risk definitely there. And it would affect these businesses, Q-commerce businesses, much harder than, for instance, pure uh, food delivery businesses. Uh, just because uh, food delivery is already more advanced, closer. Right, you already uh, have the scale. Profitability. Yes, exactly why in Q-commerce uh, you are still uh, in a phase where you are growing and that requires quite a lot of investment and capital. So that can, I think, uh, constitute a barrier. And of course, uh, if that happens, then uh, there would be fewer new entrants in the market and also the expansion of the existing companies uh, would be slower because they would need to optimize a bit. Uh, right, they need to right. then uh, live longer until the next investment round. So that's one thing. The second thing I think is a, a general work sh workforce shortage in the market. I think it affects uh, by now <laughs> all of Europe. Definitely. And, uh, and it affects most of the professions. And, uh, and I think it can hardly affect two kind of professions uh, in this field. One is the, the couriers and the other one is the pickers, shoppers, or however we call them, who are working in the dark stores or warehouses, assembling the orders. Um, so I think it's getting more and more difficult to actually find these people. And that can constitute a, a limit on the growth. So imagine that, yes, probably you could, uh, I don't know, deliver twice as much uh, or twice as many orders, but if there are no twice as many careers that you can hire, then you can you just kind of do it. And that's when you see uh, on these platforms that, hey, we are closed now temporarily, or uh, there is a, I don't know, a 60 minute delay, or now there is a, a two euro surcharge uh, to deliver. Yeah. So you can already feel kind of the effects of this general trend. And the, and the third I would highlight as a risk is general, general regulation in Europe. Uh, especially the upcoming uh, platform work directive that is under discussion now at the European Commission. Right, right. Uh, I think that can also pose quite a big risk uh, to all these Q-commerce or in general delivery platforms in Europe. So just for, for those who don't know this directive, it has the ambition to actually improve the conditions of platform workers. Uh, with which objective uh, I myself, for instance, fully agree. And we also want to continue to improve those conditions. Definitely. Uh, As a goal, it's some... a brilliant goal. But uh, there yes. is a but. Yes. Yeah, there is a but that uh, one way to do that by the latest news is that it would be basically, uh, so all uh, platform workers would be deemed employees Otherwise, the platforms uh, prove otherwise that they are not employees, but freelancers. And uh, of course, if this is the case, then uh, that would hit hard the entire industry. And by the way, this is something that the platform workers wouldn't uh, want either. Definitely. Employees because, 
if you if you ask them so there were several uh, researches and surveys about that if you ask them uh, the num by far the number one reason why they are doing that is flexibility and if they become employees they lose the flexibility so i i, I do hope that there will be a better solution uh, one good example is uh, the greek example uh, in greece they basically passed the law where um, freelancers uh, can get additional benefits from these platforms without the risk of being reclassified as employees and and that that is amazing and huge because many of the platforms cannot provide additional benefits because of the current regulations in those countries because of the risk of reclassification uh, so i think um, i i really hope that there will be a better way uh, to resolve this issue so coming back to the, why is it a risk of course if uh, all the riders will be reclassified to employees there will be various issues number one uh, many of those riders won't work as riders anymore uh, because they lose the flexibility and right. if they cannot work flexibly they they cannot work so right away uh, there will be uh, um, a significant amount of uh, riders who basically create the create this industry this on production. the recent on the recent research by Deliveroo in Belgium I think like around 50 percent of couriers said that they will not continue doing the job if they would be employed this is yeah. huge I mean yes. a friend of mine he's a courier in in Prague and he says I can make the same money being flexible as my friend a second year and at Exxon Mobil is doing yeah, yeah. And I can do my startup. I can run yeah. a lot of things together. And he's happy with that. Yeah. And uh, I think that uh, it is a very, it, it is a very sad thing that uh, these cases are not heard because they are actually the majority. They're just not the loudest okay. because they are actually uh, doing uh, the deliveries. You know, they know their benefits. Uh, they're getting from this job. Different people find different benefits for themselves on different platforms, right? Uh, I just think that uh, this voice in many cases is not heard because it comes uh, not from just couriers, but the companies rather, yeah. right? And the actual couriers, they are not um they're not listened as much they're taken as the company sharing the information on the behalf which might not be true for some people right yeah yeah and this is this is a very sad situation yeah so uh, yeah i do hope that this will change so for instance uh, uh we at delivery hero together with some other european uh, delivery platforms we did uh, quite a large research consisting of more than sixteen thousand riders Europe uh, with the help of the Copenhagen uh, Economic Institute and uh, with that we try to actually show the voice of the riders uh, right yeah, we will keep working on that uh, so yeah let's see but uh, just to uh, tie up your your question so yeah this is definitely uh, a big risk to the industry right and guys if you want to read more about the situation with the market we'll leave a link uh, to the overview article uh, in the description uh, to the video where uh, actually I tried to put together several views of the sides of the government of the uh, market players uh, and whatnot. Um, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for sharing all this information. Um, if you would like to share uh, your vision uh, for the uh, growth of the industry in the next couple of years, maybe uh, on the market where you see it, like what is the ambition for the online offline ratio? Like how much uh, percent are you planning to get? Or maybe some, some, some insights that yeah. you can share or some of your uh, other ambitious goals, like getting these yeah. uh, 10 million orders per month. Would love yeah. to, to have your vision. Yeah. So I think uh, on the one hand side, this entire Q-commerce uh, will be like a much more common phenomenon and, uh, and, uh, and uh, it will be much more widely spread in the coming years. So you will get used to basically order anything within 30 minutes, as I said. 
uh, not only your food or not only your groceries, but basically anything. And, uh, and this would be true for, for entire Europe, I would say. When it comes to Hungary, yes, our ambition is to reach this uh, one order per person per month uh, threshold in the coming years. And uh, also our ambition, uh, as I also mentioned before, to actually become the largest e-commerce player in the country, not only in terms of transactions, right. but also in terms of revenues and GMV. Um, so these are our big ambitions for the market. And probably one more thing that I would highlight as an ambition um, that we haven't discussed yet is that we would like to become uh, basically the best employer uh, in the market because uh, I'm referring back to the probably the first five or 10 minutes, I think it's critical to have the best talents to, to basically win such a competitive uh, and, and quickly changing uh, in such a competitive and quickly changing environment. Uh, so uh, we are also working a lot on that one. And, and, hope, and, and fortunately, uh, already now we have amazing talents in the company. So there are more and more people uh, joining from uh, large consultancy firms, from the best uh, universities uh, abroad, moving home to Hungary. And, and we would like to see that more and more. Uh, and, and I believe that that is doable because if you think about it, uh, usually tech companies are the best places to work in all of the rankings just right. because of the exciting topic that you can work on. And uh, and I mean, who else would be then that company in Hungary, if, if not us, if we can become then the largest e-commerce player, so tech company. So that's also a big ambition for me and us. Right. This is awesome. Actually, it is uh, amazing to talk to the uh, top players and the uh, founders and the managers in the industry. And uh, the detail uh, that I believe is very important uh, is that everyone mentions the importance of people uh, mm. and the importance of the uh, intelligence uh, being um, brought more and more to the market in terms of the number of people, in terms of the number of ideas. And this is one of the driver, um, uh, one of the driver trends uh, for mm. the industry because even though it's just the beginning, it's been already quite a few years uh, since food uh, and grocery delivery and e-commerce uh, has been on the market. And there are a lot of talents that were brought up uh, by these startups, by the bigger uh, companies, retailers, FMCGs and whatnot. And it's really great that a lot of people are getting more and more in the community. It's great that you value uh, these as well and you try to bring up more people uh, and to, to give them the best place to work and the opportunity to grow and develop themselves. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this conversation. If you wanted to add something, my pleasure. No, thank you. Thank you also very much. Uh, I really appreciated all the questions. I really enjoyed the discussion. And yeah, I hope that uh, it was helpful to, to many of the listeners and viewers. So yeah, thank you so much for inviting me, Stefan. Thank you guys. Like, comment, share. As always, please subscribe uh, and uh, uh, let's share uh, this knowledge together. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.